This is my new rooted Samsung phone. It can block ads system wide, remove Samsung's bloatware, and even connect natively to Apple's AirPods. Today I'll show you all of this stuff and explain why you'd want to root your phone. So why would you want to root your Android phone? What does it actually let you do? Well, rooting your phone, it's in the name, gives you root access. This essentially means that you have full control over system files, so you can edit them, add new ones, and remove old ones that you don't like. Essentially, you have full control over the device that you own. Also, luckily for us, there is a whole community full of developers making tweaks that you can use. I'm sure a few of you guys remember jailbreaking your old iPods, iPods, iPhones, Rooting is essentially the modern day version of that for Android devices. So that all sounds great, but how do you actually root your phone? Due to the vast amount of Android device manufacturers, there are hundreds of different ways to root your device depending on the device model and firmware. I'm using a Samsung A16, so I'm using a root known as MagDisk. You should also know that before you root your phone, you will have to unlock the bootloader of the device. Most phone manufacturers like Samsung or Google, they let you unlock the bootloaders by default, but some phone companies such as Huawei straight up do not let you unlock the bootloader. That's not to say that rooting those devices isn't possible, but even if you can come up with some kind of hacky method to do it, the support online for that device is going to be very limited. So if you're picking up a device in hopes of rooting it, I would really advise you check online before you buy the device to make sure that that device is not only supported, but has a community behind it, because it's just going to make things so much easier. I think it would be a bit of a waste of time for me to try and turn this into some sort of tutorial. There are loads of different phone manufacturers that make Android devices, and within those devices there is different models and firmwares. Honestly, covering how to root an Android phone in one video would be impossible. So for that reason, I'm not going to be covering how to root a phone, I'm just going to be going over some of the cool apps and tweaks that you can do with a rooted Android phone. If you're not sure where to get started with rooting your device or whether you can do it, I'm going to leave some useful links in the description below. But without further ado, let me show you what you can do with your rooted Android phone. When Android devices are shipped, the manufacturers often add lots of apps to the base Android OS. These can be stores, services, or even sponsored apps that you straight up can't remove. Well luckily, with an app called dBloater Pro, you can remove all of these apps from your device, which not only saves you some storage, but also keeps your device from loading unnecessary services on boot. I personally removed the Samsung Store, some Google apps, and Meta services. And it lets you safely disable or uninstall the stuff you don't want. By removing unused apps, you're not just freeing up storage, you're also stopping unnecessary services from running in the background of your phone. The best part about this app is that it tells you what is safe to remove. So you're not just blindly deleting system files and hoping for the best. This is one of those tweaks that doesn't look flashy on screen, but it makes a huge difference to daily use of your device. Another massive benefit of routing is system-wide ad blocking, and this is where Ad Away comes in. Unlike normal ad blockers that only work inside of a browser, Ad Away blocks ads at a system level. This means apps disappear not just from Chrome, but from apps, games, and even some built-in system services. It works by modifying the device's hosts files, essentially telling the system to block known ad and tracking domains before they even load. The result is cleaner apps, faster load times, less background activity, and in some cases, better battery life. After enabling Adaway, I instantly noticed that apps that usually bombarded me with banner ads or pop-ups just don't anymore. And it's because it's running at a system level. You don't need to install separate ad blockers for every app. It just works in the background and works for everything. Once you experience this system, once you experience a device that is so clean like this, it's honestly really hard to go back. Today's video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the cheapest and best way to get your PCBs printed professionally. They offer lots of customization on PCBs, including the color of the silk screen, thickness of the boards, and lots of other things that you need to make your PCB perfect. They offer a top-notch quality service at low, affordable prices. They also offer 3D printing and CNC machining, making them the perfect solution for all of your project's needs. Go to the link in the description below to get your PCBs professionally printed today. Big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. 
Now let's get back to it. Next up we have Viper for Android, which completely changes how audio is handled on your rooted Android phone. On a stock device, audio processing is heavily limited. You're usually stuck with the basic EQ presets or whatever tuning the manufacturer decided to ship the device with. Viper for Android processes all of your audio in real time, whether it's music, videos, games, or even system sounds. It gives you access to features you never would have had before, such as a parametric equalizer, bass and sub-bass enhancement, clarity and detail controls for vocals and bass, surround and spatial audio effects, and per-device audio profiles for different headphones or speakers. This means that you can tune your sound specifically for your headphones, your car, or a Bluetooth speaker, and have the profile automatically switch when that device connects. What really stands out to me is how clean the audio sounds. Once it's set up properly, music feels wider, vocals are clearer, and bass has a real impact rather than just making extra noise. And it runs system-wide. Every app benefits automatically. Viper for Android really shows how much potential the audio hardware of your device has when you're actually allowed to use it. Next up, we have Capture S Posed, which is an LS Posed module that removes screenshot and screen recording restrictions enforced by certain apps. Some apps block screenshots entirely or trigger behaviors when you take one. Snapchat is a good example of this, as taking a screenshot of a chat sends the other person a notification to let them know that you have taken a screenshot. That's where Capture s Post comes in, as it detects and blocks the screenshots taken, so apps can never know when you've taken a screenshot. This is quite a niche tweak, but I found it to be really useful. And that's all it does. It removes screenshot limits imposed by apps that choose to enforce them. Next on to something a little bit more fun, Live Boot replaces the standard Android boot animation with live system logs on the phone's boot. Instead of a static logo, you'll see text flying on the screen showing you exactly what's loading in real time. Everything from system services, drivers, root modules, and background processes, you can see all starting one by one when you turn on your device. Visually, it kind of looks like a Linux terminal or some kind of developer console. Although I'm sure some people use this for debugging, I don't. I just think it looks really cool when I turn my phone on. It doesn't change how the phone runs, it doesn't improve performance, it just replaces the boot animation with something more technical and just something more visually interesting. One of the coolest and honestly most unexpected things you can do with a rooted Android phone is get proper iOS level AirPods support. And that's made possible with LibrePods. By default on Android, AirPods are treated like any other Bluetooth earbuds. You get sound and that's pretty much it. No battery indicators, no ear detection, nothing. LibrePods changes that by tapping into the features that Apple would normally lock behind the iPhone. With LibrePods enabled, you get access to accurate battery levels for each individual AirPod and the charging case. Ear detection, so audio automatically pauses when you take an AirPod out. More reliable Bluetooth behavior, especially when switching between apps. And overall, just better stability compared to stock Android pairing. It essentially makes AirPods behave the way you'd expect them to work if you were using an iPhone, just on Android instead. This is all community-driven work built by developers who figured out how Apple's accessories communicate and recreated that functionality on Android. Once LibrePods is set up, it runs quietly in the background. There's no constant tweaking or manual reconnecting. You just put your AirPods in and they work. For anyone who already owns AirPods but prefers Android, this solves one of the most annoying compromises you usually have to accept. The LibrePods app also comes included with lots of widgets so you can change between noise cancellation and transparency modes on AirPods Pro. And overall, it's just a really good example of why routing is so powerful. Not because you're doing anything particularly flashy or risky, but because you're unlocking features that manufacturers intentionally keep restricted. Okay, and that is it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. This was a little bit of a hard video to make, really, because I do feel like it's quite a niche topic. In terms of showing what software I should show off, it was quite difficult because it is kind of like saying, why do you jailbreak your phone or... Why do you mod your games console? Everyone will have a different answer, so I tried my best to kind of cover a wide variety of things in this video, but there are thousands more tweaks and apps for rooted Android phones. Even if some of the stuff in this video didn't really interest you, I can assure you there will be something for you. Anyway, this is my last video of the year, heading into 2026. I've got some great things planned for next year. 
I know this year has been a little bit slow on the channel, but uh, hopefully things are gonna pick up soon. And I'm gonna work hard to make sure that I get some good videos out for everyone in 2026. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Once again, thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Their links will be below as always, and I'll see you in the next one.